people's credit cards get warm that time of year. <laughs> they want to use their credit cards, right? And that's, th that's that buyer momentum. Like you're just, you're bombarded with shopping and you feel the need to go buy things. <laughs>here is kind of what's the new common concepts of how to do things for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And when everybody starts doing those same things, it kind of loses some of its luster. So I'll go through this and then you guys can come up with the genius stuff. And I'll keep this super simple too. But um, there's, we created something called the Black Friday playbook just internally as we we're kind of having fun with this with my, my team. And so we, we figure that, you know, throwing some really broad numbers around, we figure that our average conversion rates will double and again, these are very broad numbers. We're just throwing around, but, but conversion rates are going to go up ideally because people are going to be out there Black Friday or pre-Black Friday doing some free shopping to figure out what they're going to buy for Black Friday. With that, you know, people are, are doing this kind of pre-shopping stuff. And so conversion rates go way up, but also CPMs go way up. And so we anticipate double CPM costs. So those things, you know, again, double nice round number, right? But those things kind of offset each other potentially. So the question is, how can you bring down CPM? Um, how can you lower the cost of that traffic while keeping that conversion rate high and increasing your average order value so you can win during Black Friday, right? So, so this goes kind of without saying, but a really smart thing to do would be to start buying your traffic early, meaning get people to your site, get people watching your videos that are specific for these types of offers that you plan to do, um, advertorials for, you know, uh, products that you, that you have, video view campaigns. We're going to be doing some gift guides on the site for people and sending traffic to that. Try to get some inexpensive traffic to those places so we can start to build up some buckets um, so that when Black Friday week hits, we're going to be going really heavy in the paint with retargeting. And we'll get to that in just a second. And again, I'm going to go through this super fast, guys. Um, play to craft a great Black Friday offer. And that could be so many different things. Black Friday doesn't just mean it's for people selling widgets or e-commerce too. Um, a lot of, um, you know, digital marketer makes a lot of their money for Black Friday. I know Keith has Black Friday stuff that he's done in the past. If you're a, if you're a coach or digital marketer or you have some other type of, you know, local business or whatever, this isn't just for big e-commerce brands. But a couple of notes that we up in our meeting were if you're going to discount, at least do 20%. It seems like anything less than that is just people don't get excited for that. And there's going to be a lot of people doing, you know, 40% offsite wide stuff. And it's kind of hard to compete with the noise if you're doing anything less than 20%. And then also don't make it complicated by making them have to go use a, a coupon code. It's just one more level of breakage. So just make the price, the discounted price during that time on your site. Don't, don't make it harder for people to buy. Um, play three is bundle to increase average order value. Um, you can just make it multiples of the same thing. You're selling widgets and you can buy three for the price of two or two for the price of one or whatever it might be. Um, bundle with accessories. Um, we have a candle company and uh, we're, we're selling bundles of candles with wick trimmers and stuff like that that go along with it. Um, could be a mix of a bunch of different things that kind of make sense together kind of in a chronological order. Um, can't think of a good example of that right now. And then fourth and, and the most obvious one maybe is just a gift bundle or something like, you know, buy one for yourself and give one as a gift or something like that because, you know, tis the season. And then play four is go heavy and retargeting for the week of Black Friday. So build up a lot of these buckets for maybe the three weeks building up to it. We call it week one, two, and three of November. And then week four or Black Friday week, um, go heavy into retargeting. Um, we've discussed going anywhere from 50, 50 to 20, 80, meaning cold to warm traffic, depending on what the offer is, what the, what the, Business is how, how big of buckets we already have, how um, advanced um, the pixel is. Um, and so this is just kind of keeping it super simple and, you know, just kind of some quick one, two, three, four plays that we're considering as we go into Black Friday. Um, but we would love to hear your guys' thoughts. And also, like as Keith said, if anybody has a, a really cool creative Black Friday or holiday idea, we'd love to hear that. This is really good, Josh. Really simple. I like it. Thank you. I'll add, I'll probably have like one bullet to add to each one. So in your buying traffic early, get email addresses because email's super big here because it's going to be harder to cut through the noise. So you, you can still get super, super cheap email addresses with things like competitions and um, 
um, giveaways and that kind of stuff. And in general, they're not great quality, but if they're going to buy something once a year, it'll be on black Friday. So I would consider doing some major push to get um, leads in advance. Yeah. Um, your great black Friday offer. I agree with you doing the whole no discounts thing, but actually if you've got the room in your profit margins, I quite like stacking a discount. So you've got 30% off on your site or 20% off on your site. And then your email subscribers get an extra 15, an extra 10 or something. Right. So that that way you're giving the people like, Oh man, this is extra. And you could do that for limited times. Um, to, to increase scarcity, that kind of stuff. Right. And you can also add that on your, um, if you're prepared to give that away anyway, you can slap that on your site as a banner so that, um, any, anyone who is new to your site, you're probably going to get their email address as well. Right. So then you're kind of making up for the fact that it's way more expensive to get them on your site because you pick up someone who, you know, is a good shopper. Um, and you know, you can cunningly, target them again next black Friday or, you know, next time you have a sale or whatever. Right. So I think that's worth doing. And then <clears throat> bundling to increase AOV tactic we used last year with uh, one client was we did a bunch of bundles and we started them. I can't remember the exact timing, but something like a week ahead of, of black Friday. And we basically said, these are going to be our biggest discounts. And they're actually available now. Um, get in before Black Friday, but the trick was that we only build, uh, we only did big bundles. So let's say we're going to give twenty percent off on our across the store. We we did forty percent. I don't remember the exact numbers, but we did something like forty percent off. But only if you bought a bundle which was like twice the normal AOV or something. So that way you kind of have two bites at the cherry. It's like you've got your black Friday, Saturday, Monday, cyber Monday offers, but then you pitch, Hey, these are going to be better than our black Friday offers. Get in now kind of thing. And then you kind of have that. Ooh, cause basically the week before black Friday, Saturday Monday, you expect, you should expect the conversion rates to go down because people are waiting, right? They, they know that these offers are coming. So if you can do something to say, Hey, you don't have to wait, you can get these now we'll get them delivered to you before black Friday or whatever it is, you know, make, make pitch on that and get your timing. Um, and then on the um, go heavy on retargeting, I think, yeah, that's probably, probably a good plan. Um, I'd say go heavy on your objectives as well, because all bets are off on this. Like if people only buy once a year, they're probably sitting in the, um, you know, traffic bucket or something. I'm going to um, jump in real quick because I got to run in here, guys. So um, just the one thing would be do not underestimate, like, the buyer momentum. Do not underestimate the buyer momentum that happens during that period of time. <clears throat> and there's, there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, you, you know, all kinds of things you can do from – 12 days of Christmas, all as you leading up to that, but, but especially the holiday, the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. So anyways, um, good stuff. I got to hop off. So let's see if we can find the best idea. <laughs> one, one other thing that came to mind when you were saying that 12 days of Christmas thing too. And again, this, I don't mean this disingenuously at all. And I mean, you know, if you're going to do this, do it because it comes from a place of integrity and from your heart and stuff. But I think also putting, you know, it's a good time to talk about charitable giving and stuff. And going back to what you know, digital marketer does, they do their big Black Friday thing, and then it all goes. Crazy. I think that you know that might be also another iteration is you know into whatever your you know portion goes to to a, a charity or something like that. Again, not as a hook or as a as a angle, but as a you know legitimate thing that kind of plays into the season and plays into your you know, where your charity lands and all that stuff um, just might be an interesting thing to add on and makes the team, makes your business and your team feel great because you're able to, to give money based on, you know, Black Friday. Black Friday is one of the most uh, capitalistic things in, in the world. 
if, if there's some altruism in there, why not? Right. So I, I'd, I'd expand on that. And like for one client, we, uh, we turned their whole site black last black Friday and didn't sell anything. Um, like deliberately um, because their brand is about conscious consumption and it's about ethics and all that kind of stuff. And we figured that the brand equity that we could create, we actually advertised that we couldn't sell anything, right? Um, or that we weren't selling anything. And we figured that the long-term brand equity and finding the right customers was worth it over like kind of, fitting to a, um, a norm that isn't right for them, if you see what I mean. And the interesting thing is, like obviously they didn't sell much on that day, but they didn't really lose out because the buyer momentum, as Keith said, is there anyway, because, you know, the people are, people are in that mode. No, no, I mean, it's, you're spot on though. And I, something that just popped in my head too is, is you know, it's like, uh, I'm trying to think if you have some type of like, status or something like that um if you were to put like a like a review a true review that you pull off of amazon or off of you know your shop right? whatever it is it, it calls out the product as like the most unique gift i ever gave or the best gift i ever gave or whatever that is Did i lose you guys no that's a good idea but my I, i'd build on that and say don't be running that just on black friday get that going now because yes. um i at that event i was at last week there was some stats about the number of people that have completed their Christmas shopping by mid November. And it surprised me how high it was. I can't remember the exact number, but it, it was a lot. And it, I'm going to say it was 38.3% because then that no one's going to um, challenge me on that number, but um, it, it was a lot of people. Um, so it's never too early in this. But yeah, maybe start it on the 1st of October or something, but like the, the, gifting angle and then you get some time for it to to build up yeah i i would say even like also consider putting together like a video again depending on what you sell but let's say if you sold um you know some some really cool um, you know clothing to a very specific market um to start even you know the, the concern is you know you're gonna you're gonna make people wait till black friday to buy stuff if you start reselling your black friday stuff but I, I think that, like you said, you can, you can, you can actually kind of have a, a rollout of week one, week two, week three, week four, of November. How and, and what I was going to say was create like maybe a video that's like preview of some of our Black Friday deals that are coming up, and then you know see retarget people who watch that video to a certain to a certain point to get people excited about that specific thing. And then, and then it's, you know, Black Friday, part one, part two, part three, and it's different bundles and different things that you're rolling out. And it's like, you know, get your black, we're, we're doing Black Friday early this year so that everybody gets their stuff in time for Christmas um, or the holidays or whatever we're calling it now. So um, just another consideration is, you know, like, don't be afraid maybe to show as long as, as I, I would say, as long as it's bundles that aren't really available any other time and stuff like that, as long as it's kind of unique type of stuff. Or Black Friday. Tracy, uh, one of the other advisors was on and I love the way she put it. And she's like people, she held her hand up, like people's credit cards get warm that time of year. <laughs> they want to use their credit cards, right? And that's, th that's that buyer momentum. Like you're just, you're bombarded with shopping and you feel the need to go buy things. You know, <laughs> maybe it's just me being a girl. I don't know, but. <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, definitely I'll definitely. True. You know. Like we almost always need some kind of new computer equipment right. each year and we'll try and buy that because it's max. Like the only time they ever do a deal is on Black Friday. Exactly. So we'll always try and save it up till then. If you, if you do products or if you're an agency that runs ads for products, definitely put together your own playbook here and, you know, go see what other people are doing and, and, other marketers and you know get active in our group and we can continue this conversation and i would say also um you know if you are not an e-commerce person if you are just running your agency or if you are um you know a coach or you do webinars or you do info products or you do local or whatever that might be think about how you can like you said the credit cards are hot they're burning holes in people's pockets how can you how can you do something that that surfs this wave a bit 
Um, and, and I would say everybody has an opportunity here. So if people are tuned out because they don't think they don't do e-commerce, I'd, I'd be concerned that you were missing out on opportunity where people are just buying, buying stuff to buy stuff. And the other thing I would say too, if you are an info product person, I don't know if this plays into you, you guys, but I'm always so busy during the other 11 months of the year. I, it's, it's hard for me to even consume stuff that I'm interested in. But the last couple weeks of December are pretty just go to the mountaintop, kind of regroup, come up with some goals for the following year, consume some educational stuff. And so if you're an e-commerce person, or I'm sorry, a uh, info product person, um, this is a good time to actually get people to consume your stuff. And so, you know, leverage that if you can.